Hello, I'm Caroline Searcy. Welcome to a new year of Bread to Win. The return of your favourite segments, along with all the latest news and views from the thoroughbred breeding world. Of course, we'll look at some of the pedigree highlights from day two of the championships at Royal Randwick. We'll recap another thrilling English Easter yearling sale and Case Clay in Arrowfield Studs Horsey Major Love Racing. That's all coming up on the return of Bread to Win. Racing. Mawonga hopped up in the air a bit at the start and was one of the last into stride. The championships are billed as Australian Racing's grand finals and the $5 million wait for age title, the Queen Elizabeth Stakes, lived up to its enthralling build-up as a European-bred son of former champion Australian two-year-old Pride of Dubai won the Group 1 feature, trained by leading UK trainer William Haggis. Dubaiana is drawing clear, and William Haggis has done it again. Dubaiana by three lengths to Animo. Mawunga rattling home into third. Dubaiana proved the best horse on the day, beating the flying Mawunga and nine-time Group 1 winner Animo in a race for the ages. The Randvet Stakes winner was bought by Rabba Bloodstock and raced by Muhammad Obeda, having been sourced at the 2019 Tattersall's October yearling sale. He's from the unraced Monsieur Mare Mondelis, while Pride of Dubai stood last season at Coolmore Studs Hunter Valley base at a fee of $16,500. But here's Jack, explosive Jack! ATC, SA and Tasmanian Derby winner Explosive Jack is back in top form, taking out the $2 million Sydney Cup for Kieran Ma and Dave Eustace. The son of the ill-fated Jackalberry, the now five-year-old was sold by New Zealand's Novara Park to Peter Moody for $100,000. His damn extra explosive was a stakes winner in New Zealand from the family of New Zealand Derby winner Vinda Dance. Uh, what a win in the Queen of the Turf, a t-shirt bolts in. The great run for New Zealand's Waikato stud continued in the Group 1 Queen of the Turf stakes as the Chittick family bred a tissue scored her first major victory as her sire Savabil's third group one winner of the championships. Savabil and Waikato stud also combined to produce Derby winner Major Beal and TJ Smith stakes winner I Wish I Win, while a tissue's dam Posey is a sister to AJ Seahawks winner Daffodil. The five-year-old featured in the Waikato stud draft in our 2019 NZB yearling sale preview, selling for $260,000 to go racing. Half cabin, big performance half cabin. While Animo may not have been able to register a tenth group one win on the day, it was still a hugely successful day for the Godolphin training operation and their Dali Stallions. High class three year old Aft Cabin was successful in the million dollar Arrowfield Sprint. His dam Shelters, a daughter of Lonro, is a full sister to Group 1 winning two year old Ben Fika, while his sire is Stern, a son of Medalia Doro and Blue Hen broodmare Essoera, also sired this season's Caulfield Guineas winner Golden Mile. In the Group 2 Sapphire Stakes for the Mayor's Brazen Bow Zapateo was successful, continuing on from her win in the birthday card quality. Her dam Gerizana by Lonro also produced Zapateo's Group 2 winning half-brother Osborne Bulls, while Brazen Bow covered 95 mares at a fee of $44,000 at Darley's Victorian base in 2022. And the first part of a stakes winning trifecta for Godolphin began in the listed Fernhill Mile for two-year-olds. Tom Kitten produced a staggering performance late, while his dam, the street crime mayor, transfers, is the mother of Canberra Guineas winner promotion. Tom Kitten's sire, Harry Angel, is in a battle with Justify and Brave Smash for first season sire honours and may back up in the Group 1 Champagne Stakes on Saturday. Awesome John hits the front. And the Group 2 Western Australian Derby was won by John O'Shea's Awesome John, a last start third place getter in the Tullock Stakes at Rose Hill. He's a son of the Fastnet Rock Stallion Awesome Rock, who stands at owner Stan Sarich's Goldfront Thoroughbreds in Western Australia. Awesome John is from the family of Star Kiwis, 60 Seconds and Spotswood. The Mitchell family have a new stallion to stand alongside their champion I Am Invincible and his son Hellbent, with new 
news through the week, exciting Japanese bred Brave Smash will stand at the Hunter Valley base from this season. The Manicato and Futurity Stakes winner by Deep Impact has already thrown stakes winning two year old Brave Mead as one of his five winners from 14 starters. Adam Sangster's Sweatnam starters decided to keep their gun young sire Toronado's service fee at the same level as last season. The son of High Chaparral will again stand for $88,000 in 2023 despite the deeds of offspring such as Galaxy winner Maria Mia. Jack and Osai Rubik will however see his fee rise to $27,500. Hey! Crush Deli drawn clear. The English graduate of the week came in the million dollar Percy Sykes stakes for two year old fillies and victory for the hellbent filly Christilly. She's the first stakes winner for the new partnership of Annabelle Neesham and Lizzie Jelfs and was bought for $200,000 at the 2022 English Classic sale. Christilly is the second stakes winner for her sire Hellbent, who stands alongside his sire I Am Invincible at Yarraman Park. Their previous stallions, Magic Albert and Catbird, also feature in the pedigree, while the filly is from the family of She Will Be Loved and Lucia Valentina. Time for a break on the return of Bread to Win. Coming up, all the great theatre and stories from the Inglis Easter Yearling Sale 2023. Pennywacker trying to fend off so dazzling. The Cambridge Stud performance of the week came in a race so often dominated by New Zealand bloodlines, the ATC Australian Oaks. Penny Weaker followed on from the recent successes of Very Elegant, Bonneval, Sophia Rosa, Rising Romance and so many more, with the daughter of Rich Hill Stud, Satono Aladdin, a dominant winner, adding to her success in the New Zealand Oaks for trainer Jim Wallace. Penny Weaker is from the Pentine Mare Threepence, while her sire, a son of Deep Impact, continues the great run of Rich Hill Stud Stallions in feature Australian races, standing alongside Poisier, Vadamos and Shocking. The 2023 Inglis Australian Easter Yearling Sale drew together the best quality yearlings, the world's biggest buyers and elite vendors providing some great theatre here at Riverside in Sydney. Let's recap some of the highlights. Sebastian, congratulations. What an incredible English Easter 2023. I guess, you know, there's a feeling of, of relief, of, of, you know, satisfaction as well. Your entire team has done such a great job for the vendors and, of course, the buyers. Yeah, I mean, we were excited about the quality of the horse we had to offer at the sale, but at the same time, you know, approach the sale with a degree of uh, trepidation just because of circumstances. Don't really quite know what to expect. I mean, feedback in advance, the sale was excellent in terms of people wanting to participate, but Really, you don't know until the first horse walks into the ring as to how things are going to go, but it's played out probably well above and beyond what our expectations were in advance of the sale. And it's very satisfying to sit here now and have the results that we do. Uh, you know, have so many happy people going home from the sale. I mean, it's not a record breaking sale by any stretch of the imagination, but just under the circumstances, it feels like a sale that everybody's very, very pleased with. And you've been, been very careful through the entire sale season to keep a bit of a lid on expectation. Obviously, you know, the interesting, you know, difficult financial times for some people. But, you know, to be able to, to be, you know, have $26 million lots and, and the stats, the clearance rate as well, I guess that was sort of the fear that, you know, there aren't enough buyers around. But I tell you what, the buying bench was so interesting, wasn't it? It's spread over so many different individuals and groups. I mean, I'd like to be able to say it's all the work that we do to get buyers to the sale, but <laughs> it's just the profile of the sale attracts people. You know, it's a sale that people want to be involved in because people know that the horses that are here are going to be the best yearlings they see all year. They know that those horses are those that are most likely to go on and win good races, and ultimately anybody who's here trying to buy a horse is buying a horse they think can go and be a good racehorse or want to be a good racehorse. And this sale just has an extraordinary reputa reputation, not just domestically, but internationally, as a source of elite racehorses. 
and that that attracts people. You know, mm. it's it's an iconic sale from the point of view of people wanting to sell at, people wanting to buy from, and that makes a massive contribution to being able to run a successful sale. And certainly that's the way it's played out this year. Mm. But the Queen sells for one point eight million. Late on day two, the thrilling scenes of Silverdale Farm selling their stunning The Autumn Sun half-sister in the Congo for $1.8 million to Arrowfield. So really great for a young stallion. But a pinhook, $600,000 I believe the first time, according to Steve Grant, a pinhook has topped the sale as well. And, you know, as, as uh, Steve was saying, it needs to be three times that to be a good pinhook. He got that, $1.8 million. Incredible scenes. You should three-quarter sister to a very good horse and in the Congo. You know, I, I didn't realise until I read all the marketing material that in the Congo is the fastest ever winner of the Golden Rose. She's a proper horse, uh, she's a beautiful filly and I think people attach a huge amount of significance to the Silverdale draft now in a short space of time it's established itself as a very very significant operator in the Australian thoroughbred marketplace and that's credit to Steve and Eliza Grant. I think it's very flattering to a filly uh, to come to a sale like Easter and have the farm that's perennially the leading vendor at the sale buy her. I think it's a great testament to the regard in which she was held by people who know the progeny of the autumn sun better than anybody and you know I don't think it'll be any surprise to anyone if she goes on to become a top class race for And of course, a, a Piero half sister to learning to fly from Coolmore, going to Michael Wallace and Cool Deep Singh, a new buyer. Great to see, $1.75 million. But, but you know, new blood, really passionate and interested in the industry. That's just an outstanding result. Well, I think Cool Deep has one of been, or certainly been one of the most significant new investors in the international thoroughbred industry in the last three, four years. You know, he previously dipped his toe in the market in Australia, but you know, he's dived right in now acquiring quality stock and that's a pretty special filly I mean it's, you know it's, it's a lot of money 1.75 million but if she ends up being as good a race filly as what she's bred to be it'll represent a bargain she's a sibling to a top class filly it's a family that's synonymous with you know high class fillies in particular and you know hopefully she's a lucky filly for for the connection <laughs> And of course, uh, late in day two, we saw uh, great scenes for the Lime Country team. $1.6 million schnitzel cot from Ultimate Fever. And, you know, as Joe said, thank God for Coolmore. She was so pleased to get some great results. They sold $3 million lots. Of course, the dam had already done the job with schnitzel. But for Joe and Greg Griffin and their incredible clients, this is just a wonderful result. We worked exceptionally hard to establish you know, a very successful farm and a very significant brand in a short, short space of time. I mean, huge credit to, to Greg and Joe. It's not an easy thing to do. You know, everybody wants to be here on days like today with high priced yearlings, but it's a significant responsibility, so it's not something that anybody can do. And the fact that they've turned up at a sale like this with a small draft and churned out three yearlings to make over a million dollars is really quite a testament to the work that they've done, the structure that they've put in place on their farm, the staff that they've got and you know I think it's a platform on which a farm like Lion Country can continue to build. Well, New Haven Park, of course, they've had a great time lately with Maria Mia winning the Galaxy and Arts, winning the Adrian Knox, and they sold a $1.55 million I'm Invincible English cult to Tony Fung, Kiora starred Gay Waterhouse, and great to see Gay get the son of her great mare who raced in those New Haven colours. I think when you consider iconic Australian farms, you know, there's Widen and New Haven. I mean, the Kelly family are synonymous with top class Australian thoroughbreds. Went to that farm last August to have a look at the yearlings, and John Kelly said, We're going to give you a special yearling to sell. The you know, I'm Vincible called out of English, and it was exciting then. And to see him mature into this beautiful yearling that he did here on the complex, 
it was very exciting and then to have it rewarded in the sale ring is very satisfying. I mean, given opportunities like this by vendors like that and creates a degree of pressure, a degree of expectation, but you know, the horses ultimately make it easy for us and it was great to be able to deliver a good result. Gay has obviously had incredible success with that filly. You know, English was just brilliant. I mean, probably unlucky to bump into Chautauqua at Randwick a couple of times, denied her further big race success, but if that horse is half as good as his mother, well, he'll be a special race horse. Mm, indeed, and the other bar, I mean, you know, we're looking at, you know, Coolmore buying selectively, and James Harron, of course, also with a brother to uh, Russian Revolution. Yulong, uh, Yusheng Zhang and Sam Fairgrave, they had a massive sale. I mean, you know, they had so many of these yearlings that they were buying. And it's really quite interesting, isn't it, too? You know, buying written tycoons, obviously they want to support the stallion as well, but it's a really fascinating sort of model. You know, some of those horses will go to, you know, the, the fillies in particular will go to their other stallions too, but a great way to support Written Tycoon by those horses going to the best stables. One really for the mirror. One really, you're struggling to find a better Written Tycoon. At one million. At one million dollars. At one million dollars, I catch you now. At one million dollars, you go at one point. Fifty. Yes, sir! One point one. One point one zero. That's one point for all the little he goes. He goes forever. The hammer's up. All done. For one point four million. You are the wise. One point four. Thank you, team. That's very tough. Oh, look, I, I think Mr. Zhang is taking the approach that most people would like to try and take to their racing and breeding enterprise, and that's acquiring quality and accumulating quality. Uh, they've taken a fairly consistent approach doing that over the years. This is the biggest, certainly the biggest imprint they've made in our yearling marketplace. He's bought some beautiful yearlings, colts and fillies. He's got a fantastic operation, a beautiful farm in the Gamby, and you know, hopefully his investment continues to reap dividends over the next 5, 10, 15 years. And I think anybody who's anything to do with Mr. Zhang recognizes the passion that he has for the sport and for his business. He knows everything about every horse he has. He knows all about the stallions. He's very much, not just financially invested in it, but emotionally invested in it. And I think that's, I think that's exciting for our sport to have people who are so passionate, not just about the business, but the sport itself. And you know, you'd like to see guys like him well rewarded and deservedly so. One point one of all the news outlets. One point one. One point one five. How do you do it? Leading into the sale, we had lovely young stallions, but you know, the proven size, we're talking about I Am Invincible, topping the aggregate ahead of Snitzel, Ridden Tycoon, you know, they're the champion size of the past six or so years, Zoo Star, Piero and the Autumn Sun, but the proven size, this is just an outstanding sale to buy, buy these proven sales, size. Yeah, well, ultimately we're very lucky to be supported by vendors with quality progeny of these stallions, you know, whether it's I Am Invincible, Snitten, Snitzel, Ridden Tycoon, Zoo Star, Fast and Rock. To have those supplemented by fantastic yearlings by some of the younger, more progressive stallions, whether it's the Autumn Sun, Justified, Trapeze Artists, the first crop horses, you know, we're trying to marry together a series of yearlings with different profiles into a catalogue that we think can appeal to as broad a cross-section as possible. And I'd like to think, judging by the results, it's come together really well. And the leading vendors, of course, Arrowfield, the leading vendor again at Inglis East, and no surprise, of course, presenting 68 beautiful yearlings for sale, but that takes some effort, obviously, to do that by the entire Arrowfield team, and Whitten and Coolmore, Yarraman, Vinery, Sedgenhoe, Newgate, Lime Country, you know, all from the Hunter Valley, the top uh, farms as well. So it is still the, you know, Australia's premium producer of yearlings for Inglis East and onto the racetrack. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to think a lot of the vendors go home from the sale very happy with the outcome of the sale. I mean, it's a competitive marketplace, but I feel a very fair one. And, you know, testament to those big farms that bring large numbers here and their capacity to service the buyers effectively, prepare those yearlings well. I mean, Arrowfield do an extraordinary job. It's a wonderful nursery right the way through. Widden, Coolmore, Sejano, Yarraman, Kiora, and then the series of... Uh, interstate and international vendors with good New Zealand representation in the sale this year. I think they go home very pleased with the sale. 
ultimately we want to try and create an environment that you know appeals to a broad cross-section of vendors you know we want to sustain a, a well diversified catalog year after year because we feel that's what appeals the most to buyers and I think the result of the sale this year puts us on a good footing as we look forward to 2024. The G1 gold mine analysis of the top seller at the 2023 English Easter yearling sale shows this match is rated as excellent. The distance profile, which groups all stakes winner pedigrees that are considered closely related to lot 440, shows this filly is built for speed with clear success at 1200 metres across all age groups. The Redoute's choice VAR cross is clearly the standout with 15% Group 1 winners to runners, including Master Archie in the Congo and I'm Thunderstruck. This cross is working 20 times better than expected by the algorithm. Another great sale and can't wait to see these babies hit the racetrack next year and become the champions of the future. Coming up after the break, the return of the popular Arrowfield stud horse who made you love racing, featuring America's Case Clay. Slua Gold uh, is the horse that made me love racing. Um, he was he ran in 1984, and I mean he ran before that as well. But I started watching him. Uh, my parents got involved with him um, and syndicated him. And so as he was racing, we would fly from Kentucky to New York, and he would win a Grade One, uh, whether it was the Woodward or the Jockey Club Gold Cup or the Marlboro Cup, and then we would go to McDonald's and then we would fly home. And I just remember being in the fourth grade thinking this is a routine he goes up we go up he wins a grade one we arrive home and then for the rest of my life I've realized how difficult that actually was <laughs> so he's slew of gold's the horse that made me love racing a lot of people that come from a racing or breeding background don't necessarily follow in their parents footsteps and have that love but but what really made you sort of enjoy racing from there yeah you know, obviously the memories of, of a champion racehorse one, one other thing that I that I latched onto as a kid and I still love is all the different variables that go into, into racing. Whether it's how the, how the jockey rides the horse or the surface that day, there are just, just so many variables and how special it is just to get a win because so many things can go wrong. But if they go right, there's just nothing like the thrill of it, of actually being, whether you bet on that horse or you own a little sliver of that horse, uh, watching that horse cross the wire first, there's there's no thrill like it. Blue of Gold has taken two of the full championship races. That is the return of Bread to Win for the new season. Make sure you tune in again next week as we look at the sire sensation of the autumn carnival, New Zealand's son of Schwazir Poisir at Rich Hill Stud. With a Group 1 producing record this season, any sire would be envious of anywhere in the world. That and much more next week on Bread to Win. I'm Caroline Searcy. I look forward to seeing you then. Bread to Win, brought to you by Arrowfield, the home of four-time champion sire, Snitzel.